Welcome to Hedgehog's Hungry Hodgepodge. It's the fourth Saturday of the month and that means it's dessert week. Now that Thanksgiving is approaching, it's time to give up the idea that you're making the pumpkin pie. It's not gonna happen. Too many people are gonna be fighting to make that pie and it's not worth the arguing. The way to rub in that fact is to make my fabulous, much better than pumpkin pie, apple pomegranate pie. Let's begin, let's begin. First, we're gonna make our pie crust. All right, first you're gonna add into a bowl one and two thirds of a cup of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons white sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're just gonna mix that together really quickly. You can use your hands because you're gonna be using them in a second. Now that that's combined, you're gonna add about two-thirds of a cup of butter that you cut into pieces. That's a little under a stick and a half. And using your hands, again, you're gonna combine that, sort of squishing the butter into the flour until it becomes nice and crumbly. All right, this is the only somewhat tricky part of the entire recipe. You're gonna very, very quickly add two to four tablespoons of ice water and mix it in immediately with your hands, forming a dough ball. So, I'm gonna start with three, and if I need more, I can add more. Doesn't look like it'll need it though. Ha, <laughs> need. <laughs> Oh. Alright, so now that I've formed a little ball, I'm going to put it on some saran wrap and just push it into a disc shape. And we're just going to wrap that up very tightly. And we're going to pop it in the fridge and leave it there for a half an hour. Next, we're going to be making our filling. Alright, while we're waiting for our dough, we're going to begin making our filling. So I've got here three peeled, cored, and chopped up Granny Smith apples. These hold up really well um, when they're baking for a long time in high heat. If you can't find Granny Smith, a uh, Golden Delicious and I think Royal Gallo works well too. I'm putting them in an enormous bowl. Then you're going to add about a cup of pomegranate seeds. Now you can get these already seeded for you if you want to do it yourself from a fresh pomegranate. I'm going to leave a link for how to seed a pomegranate. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of freshly grated ginger, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, about a quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg, about a quarter cup of dark brown sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, about a pinch, and about three tablespoons of flour. And you're just gonna combine all of this. Now we're ready to slap all that together and get it going. All right, we finished making our filling, and now we've got our pie crust that's been sitting around for about a half an hour. I'm just gonna flour it a little bit. And we're gonna roll this out to about 12 inches in diameter. And this is where it gets uh, a little tricky, terminology-wise. Uh, this technically isn't a pie. Um, I guess you could call it a, a cheater's pie. It's, it's a lot easier in my opinion. This is what is technically known as a galette. Instead of putting this into a pie pan and baking the crust first, like you would normally do with a pie, the filling's just gonna go directly on top of this wet dough and it'll all get baked together. Which is a lot easier than making a normal pie. So while all your family members were fighting over that difficult pumpkin pie, you got the easy bit. Basically, you're just rolling this out so that your filling can fit on it. It's definitely not meant to look perfect. It's a very rustic sort of pie, which I think is perfect for Thanksgiving. All right, and that looks about right, so I'm gonna turn this out onto a greased baking sheet. Next, you're just gonna top your filling onto it, 
and you want it to go directly in the center leaving a little bit of an edge and you'll see why in a minute oh that looks so pretty oh, I love the colors of it it's so gorgeous okay and next you're gonna take those edges and just fold them up to the fruit again it doesn't have to look perfect that's the the rustic aspect to it but you're making your own little crust without having to try too hard then you're just gonna sort of brush the edges of it with milk I I don't have a brush so I'm just gonna run my fingers with milk all over it along the edge this is just gonna give it a nice little golden crust you don't need to use too much I, I definitely recommend using a brush though <laughs> And then we're just going to sprinkle the crust a little bit with some white sugar. It'll look all glistening and gorgeous when it comes out. Now we're just going to pop it into an oven that I've preheated to 375. And we're going to leave it in there for 35 minutes. www.hedgehogshungryhodgepodge.com You can leave comments and suggestions there or right here on YouTube. I'd love to hear what you think. We'll see you guys next week for another episode of Hedgehog's Hungry Hodgepodge. Say bye!